A fistula is an abnormal connection between two surfaces. It has two openings known as internal and external openings and a hollow tract. A fistula in ANO is an abnormal connection between your back passage, also known as the anal canal, and the skin surrounding it. The fistula can originate from the rectum as well. Rarely, it may open into other body parts like the vagina or the urinary tract. The anal canal has small glands just inside the anus. Sometimes these glands can get blocked. When one of these blocked glands gets infected, it forms an abscess. As an abscess gets bigger, it may tunnel under the surface. This will form a fistula leading from the anal canal and extending to the skin surrounding your anus. A fistula can occur in certain conditions. In Crohn's disease, there is ongoing inflammation in the skin surrounding your back passage. Radiation therapy for cancer can also cause some changes in the skin in that area. Rarely, injury to the anal canal, surgery, cancer, tuberculosis and HIV infection can also cause a fistula. The anal sphincter consists of two circular muscles that surround your back passage. These muscles help in maintaining anal continence. Fistulas are classified according to their relationship to these muscles. A fistula may go above, through, in between or superficial to these muscles. Accordingly, they are known as suprasphincteric, transphincteric, intersphincteric or extrasphincteric fistulas. This classification is one of the main determinants of treatment for fistula. The commonest type is an intersphincteric fistula. Pain in or near your back passage is one of the commonest symptoms of a fistula. You may also notice the passage of blood or pus from one of the openings. This may be intermittent. If you also have an abscess along with your fistula, you may notice a swelling and soreness. You may develop fever as well. If the fistula extends towards the vagina in a female, you may notice an abnormal vaginal discharge. If the fistula opens to the bladder, you may get repeated urinary infections. If your doctor suspects a fistula, he will examine your back passage to look for certain features. The external opening will be found near the back passage. This will often discharge pus or blood. The doctor will also examine the inside of your anal canal to identify the internal opening or the upper end of the fistula. He will use an instrument known as a proctoscope for this. Rarely, the internal opening can be at the level of the rectum. If you have an abscess along with the fistula, the doctor may notice a swelling and redness. That area may be painful to touch. Many fistulas only drain intermittently. So the doctor may not find any abnormality if you have been symptom-free during that period. Most fistulas are diagnosed 
based on what the doctor finds when he talks to you and when he examines you. Occasionally, you may need investigations. These may be to characterize the tract, to identify any additional tracts or additional openings, and to identify any underlying cause. An endovenal ultrasound uses a special probe inserted to your back passage to obtain ultrasound images. Now, doctors can recreate these in 3D. A pelvic MRI scan focuses on the pelvis to characterize the fistula. If you have several or recurrent fistula, you may need investigations to characterize the fistula tract and to identify any underlying cause. There is no medical treatment to cure a fistula occurring in an otherwise healthy person. So if you have a fistula, you will need surgery. Like I mentioned earlier, the pathway of the tract is one of the main determinants of the treatment. A short fistula with minimal involvement of the anal sphincter muscles may be treated with a fistulotomy. During this procedure, the fistula tract is opened up to join the internal and the external openings. This creates a groove that heals from the inside out. This procedure has a long history and a good success rate. The disadvantage is that this damages some muscle fibers of the anal sphincter. So this is not suitable for all fistula. A seton is a thread that is inserted into the fistula. There are two main types of setons. A drainage seton is used to ensure that the pus inside the fistula drains out and doesn't cause an abscess. This allows the infection and inflammation to settle. A cutting seton is used to cut the tissue slowly so that it may heal at the same time. There are many surgical options that don't damage the muscle fibers of the anal sphincter. In flap surgery, healthy tissue from the anal canal is used to close the internal opening. In ligation of the intersphincter fistula tract, or lift procedure, the fistula tract is divided and tied off. Newer techniques in the management of fistula include video-assisted fistula treatment, also known as VAFT, and laser treatment. You will be given medicine for the pain and antibiotics to prevent an infection. Pain will also be improved with warm baths or sits baths. You should plan to stay at home for a few days, especially until the pain settles. If there is a significant amount of discharge, you can use a dressing or a pad. You must drink plenty of water to maintain your hydration. An appropriate stool softener will be given to you, especially if you are constipated and also because some pain medicine can cause constipation. If you feel unwell, develop pain or fever or notice bleeding, you need to contact your doctor immediately. A variable number of patients will develop a fistula again. This may be at the same site or at a different site. The risk of developing a second fistula depends on a number of factors. The underlying condition. For example, patients with Crohn's disease get fistula repeatedly. The nature 
of the first fistula. If the fistula had multiple tracts, known as a complex fistula, you are at a higher risk of getting a second fistula. And the treatment used for the first fistula. Like I mentioned earlier, if you develop a second fistula, you will need tests to characterize the fistula tract and to identify any underlying cause before you have treatment. If you would like to know more about this or have any questions, please leave a comment below. You could also comment on any topics you would like me to cover in the future. Thank you.